Jenny's from Docker and welcome to this session about how to use Docker in a multi arch world. So, in past decades, the CPU hardware has been massively dominated by x86 CPUs, but there have been some uh, recent uh, new updates that are about to change that. So, uh, you probably already all know that uh, Apple is switching all their machines over to their own uh, uh, custom ARM based silicon. And uh, Amazon is doing something very similar with the Graviton 2 processors that are very cost effective. So there's never really been a better time to get more interested in multi arch and get your applications ready. So in this session, we will uh, cover how would you use Docker if you're not in x86, uh, how to use multi platform images, how to build them. We'll also look at uh, some emulation support that we provide and some techniques for cross-compilation. But let's start from uh, some very basics. So what we mean by different architecture is that uh, different types of CPUs implement different instructions. And once you build your binary, then it already targets one specific instruction set. And if you want this binary to run in another platform, then it needs to be rebuilt again, and uh, it, there needs to be a different binary. And the same thing is true for container images as well, because they contain your binaries, so they all also need to be different. And these are some of the naming conventions that we use. So uh, we target Intel and AMD CPUs, then uh, we use AMD64. And for new Apple and uh, AWS Graviton stuff, for example, it's ARM64. And there is, of course, like these other names as well that are very common. Uh, another basic concept that you should understand is multi-platform image. So this is like a special meta image that you can run when you're running a container. And instead of containing the binary bits, this image actually contains pointers to the actual single platform images. So whatever platform you're on, if you pull this image, what you're actually pulling is, uh, is what this image is pointing to. So this is the recommended way how you would use uh, uh, the images that you would uh, that you would build and, and use. So let's talk uh, about uh, how to use Docker Desktop now when you're not on x 6 And the biggest update in here, of course, is that in April we released uh, Docker Desktop for Apple Silicon. So now if you go to download it, then you have an option to get the Apple Silicon version or the Intel version. And the main difference in here is that uh, the Intel one, of course, runs the AMD64 containers, while the Apple Silicon one runs the Linux ARM64 containers by default. And Windows still runs AMD64 containers. If you're on Linux, then you can get the Docker packages directly for like a bunch of other architectures as well. So now if you're in your M1 and you download the Docker desktop, get it uh, running, it works fine. The most important thing that you need to understand is that only images that contain the binaries for a native architecture run with native speed. So in this uh, here, I'm actually running uh, an Alpine image that's specific to AMD64. And it is, this Docker gives me this warning that in my machine's platform does not actually match the image's platform. So what you want to do instead in here is to not run this specific image, but run the actual Alpine image, the official image instead, that multi-platform already. And the official images in Docker Hub are generally all multi-arch. So here's Ubuntu, and you can see in the Hub UI, like all the platforms it supports. There's some exceptions though, like this is the common one that people usually hit, uh, is that uh, MySQL image does not currently have an ARM64 variant. And uh, then you get this error, and the solution for this problem is to just use this MySQL server image instead. So that one should be a drop-in replacement. Now, some cases you do want to run images that your machine doesn't natively support. For example, you the image does not exist, or it's like very hard to rebuild, or you just want me want to run a test or something. And for that case, we support uh, a software emulation. So in this case, there's a piece of software that converts your instructions from one architecture to another. And of course, this comes from like a performance penalty. So you not use this in production. It is slower and uh, it might give you some errors sometimes as well. 
So our emulation is uh, currently provided by the QMU user mode emulation. So this is not quite the same as Rosetta that currently only works with Darwin binaries. Uh, and if you're on Docker desktop, then uh, all this emulation comes pre-configured. You don't need to do anything. Everything works out of the box. If you're in some other system than Docker desktop, then uh, for example, in your CI or somewhere like this, then you need to run this command. And uh, this command just runs this Docker image and, and this image installs all the emulation support in your kernel. And uh, with this other command, it's very similar. You can you can just run it if you want to see what kind of uh, emulation your uh, soft, your node already supports. So in this case, like this machine can run all those uh, all those platforms because it has all those emulators uh, installed. So let's look at some of the commands in action. So here I'm running in an M1 mini. You can see the it's Darwin ARM64 in here. And of course, I have Docker installed. So I can run my regular Docker commands and list my containers. And let's run a container as well. Let's run the same command in Alpine. And then you can see how the Alpine reports itself as R64 Linux. And just as a demo, let's run this uh, informat command as well to choose us the support platforms. So this way you can see that although we natively support ARM64 in here, because of emulation, we also have support for all these different architectures. So now let's talk about building images. And mostly everything will just work out of the box if you use Docker files. Uh, but there's some things you might want to look out for. So as I told you before, that you should use multi-platform images for running containers. Same thing is, of course, true for uh, building as well. So make sure that in your Docker file, if you use the from commands, then those uh, from commands point to multi-platform images. Uh, another thing that uh, you want to avoid is to have in your Docker files a constant like this that obviously will not work in any other architecture than AMD64. So instead, for this problem, what uh, the solution we provide is that you can use those predefined variables names and uh, we will automatically fill in the correct value for you, either for the image that you're trying to build or the type of machine that you're on. So for example, this is the correct example. So we define this uh, build argument target arch and on, now when you use it in the next command, we will automatically fill in the correct value in here. Uh, another thing to avoid is having different Docker files per architecture. Like some like years ago, maybe this was needed. It's not needed anymore. Just use single Docker file. If you do need to run like a completely different command for one architecture, then uh, the way to do that is to use multi-stage builds. So you can just set up your multi-stage builds in a way that some stages are built in one architecture and some are only built in others. So this way you can do this nice switch that uh, mostly this pattern is needed when uh, building Windows images, for example, together with Linux ones, because those really have some different uh, commands sometimes. And now when you're doing your build and you want to build for a different platform than what your system is actually using natively, then there's this that's just platform flag and you just use it and you set the platform that, that you want to build for. And this value is like a combination of the OS, so it's usually Linux, and then the architecture and an optional variant that's used for the 32-bit ARM systems. But uh, you probably don't want to build, again, uh, for a single platform image, what you want to really build is multi-platform image. And in that case, what you need is a docker buildx command. At least that's the easiest way to do it. And if you have not heard about Docker Buildex before, then it's like our next generation build command built on top of our, our new built it build engine. Uh, it uh, has the same UX as the, as the older Docker build command, so you don't need to learn a lot of new things. There are some additional flags and additional features, but mostly it's very similar. Uh, it also has some additional commands for creating new builders and sharing them and things like that. It has like a kind of a backend concept that uh, allows uh, different installations of BuildKit to be used. 
and and then some more interesting commands and the it is included with your Docker desktop and uh, Docker C packages, so you don't need to install anything, uh, anything uh, other than Docker itself, and it's already there. So now let's talk about the importance of those backends that we've mentioned. So what those uh, backends or drivers mean is that builders can do to different installations of the built-in engine. So one way is that there is uh, a variant of BuildKit already built into your Docker engine. So this is this Docker driver clone. But uh, there are other ways, for example, BuildKit uh, can, like a standalone BuildKit daemon can be running in your Docker container or in your Kubernetes cluster. And this is the driver that we can use to, to connect uh, to that BuildKit then. And the important thing about uh, that differentiation in here is that if you want to put multi-platform images, then you need to use uh, those drivers in here. So either the container or the Kubernetes driver. And to do that, what you do is uh, you run uh, this command docker build x create and optionally set your builder name. You can use uh, dash use to start using those, uh, this builder. And then after you run that, you have your new builder running inside the container. You can just run docker build x build and, uh, and uh, it will work exactly like your old Docker build command did. Uh, if you want to, if you don't want to use this build uh, additional command in here, but just want to run Docker build, then you can run Docker build X install, and then it will just replace the Docker build command with, with this build X build command. And now once you've done that, then you can just run the same command that we saw previously again, but now when you're specifying the platform that you're building for, you can specify multiple. You can just uh, separate them with a comma. And then this uh, Docker file that you have is just built multiple times for each platform. And you can use uh, bashes push, for example, to push this multi-platform image directly to the registry. Now, sometimes when you're doing your builds, you may need to run a process for a different architecture than what you uh, what your machine actually supports. Uh, in that case, like the simplest solution for that one is to just rely on the emulator support. And because that's very easy and requires no setup, it just works out of the box like, like magic. Uh, in some cases, you may want to avoid that though. Like for example, if you're like compiling lots of code, if you're doing like if your builds are very CPU intensive, then the overhead of emulation will, will add up. Uh, it's very good though for like installing packages and file system uh, commands and things like that. Like, like uh, for that uh, emulation is like hardly noticeable. Uh, in addition to emulation, another method that you can use is to actually create a build cluster in BuildX. So in that case, you take multiple machines that natively run on different architectures and uh, you set them up as a single builder. And now when you're doing a build, then BuildX will split this build up among the machines. All the machines will build uh, commands that they understand. And in the end, BuildX will combine them, combine it all to a single multi-platform image. So this is what you can use in uh, more complicated builds. And of course, like you, if you actually have those machines, that you can use. And uh, it's really like only good way to use when you want to like run tests for all the different architectures as well. And to build this build cluster, it's very similar to the command that we saw before. It's still docker build x create. Uh, just that if you want to add a second node, then you just run the create command again with the same builder name and you use this dash up then. And this will just, instead of creating a new builder instance, it will add a new node to your existing builder instance. So let's look at what it looks like to build a master platform image. And the first thing you need to do is to create the new builder instance in buildx. So that we run the buildx create command. And now optionally, you can just look at what the builder looks like. And you can see that it's running and it supports all those platforms. And I can actually run Docker PS and I can see the container where the builder is actually running. So now we're all set. We can start building stuff. In here, I have a simple Python project. Let's look at the Docker file. 
it's just an alpine we install python we install some python packages and copy over our source code so let's build this now and let's build this for three platforms and let's give it a name and let's push it as well so now the build is running and you can see that all the commands that i had in docker file actually ran three times so actually like three different versions of python were installed and then in the end all those three images were combined together into a single uh, multi-platform image and that was pushed and you see image in the registry one way is to use this image tools inspect command and this allows you to see that this image that i just pushed has three sub images under it and now i can of course just run this image as well and it's pulled and it works fine so another interesting way to build multiple platforms is to use cross compilation and when doing that we use the fact that uh, most uh, compilers can already generate code for any architecture so you don't actually need to run your compiler itself in a specific type of machine or or inside an emulator for example and this can be combined with multi-stage builds by defining the cross compilation stage and the benefits of doing that is that you always get native performance and you can target lots of architectures basically anything that your compiler supports uh, on the other side you do need to make some updates to your docker file and one other thing to note is that you can't really run tests this way for different architectures but you might be able to combine cross compilation with emulation for example so let's look at what it looks like to do cross compilation this way and here i have two stages i have the build stage and the and the stage that's being exported and they both based on alpine but when the first stage is defined then this from command also is using a platform flag and it defines that whenever we're creating a stage from alpine we want this alpine to be for the platform that the, the machine is based on so this way we're using this again this uh, predefined uh, variable that I showed you earlier and that makes sure that this alpine is always the system variant and then we can uh, install some application we can run our compiler and to the compiler we can actually uh, pass the target that we're building for and in the other stage we usually just copy out the binary from the build stage and put it on top of some other image so in here we can look at the example for go and go has a very good cross compilation support so basically the only thing we need to do is to find this go words and go arch variables and just set the target os and target arch to variables and and you're done it just works out of the box and it gets a little bit more complicated if you only also want to define this go arm value for the different variants of 32 bit arm but like, still manageable uh, then when we go to C go then we also need a C compiler so to get the C compiler we install this cross build essential package and we need to do some checks to see if we're cross compiling or not if we to figure out when we need it and when we don't and then when we need some cross some other library then well yeah you can see that this does not scale so instead what you can use is to use uh, pre-built cross compilation uh, image and on this image that i built is called xx that uh, provides this flexible cross compilation tool chain that already integrates with dash's platform and this specific tool chain can works on top of alpine and debian piece images can correctly build go c and c plus plus understands older tools cmake and can even make some macOS binaries and things like that so let's compare xx with some other tool chains that maybe are also distributed with containers and you will see that uh, their tool chains uh, what their what's issue with them is usually that they don't integrate with dash's platform they're usually like really big images with they're like pre-built with lots of support for like every kind of uh target you, you might uh, you might want to have and usually they're very aimed at 64 specific as well so compared to that, uh, XS of course integrates with Dutch's platforms, 
it only pulls what's needed for the target. It doesn't pull like anything, everything it supports. Uh, it uh, supports both muscle and she ellipses. ellipses. Uh, it can build from any architecture to any architecture. And it's just 15 kilobytes of POSIX shell scripts, so no big images. And the way you use XX is first, first you need to import it into your Docker file. Then when you have a build stage, for example, in here, there's an outline based build stage. You want to copy those shell scripts into your stage so to make them available. And now you have access to those, uh, the, those scripts that come with XX and you can just use them when in your commands and those scripts automatically know what your current uh, uh, platform is that you're targeting and how the command is supposed to behave correctly. So these are the scripts that are included. There's some scripts to get like information about your current build context, installing packages for different architectures, uh, of course, like C compiler, Go compiler, and also verification scripts for making sure that you built the correct thing. And here are some examples. I will just like quickly go over some of them. You should look at the documentation later. We're interested. Uh, in here, for example, for C, we install a Clang, we install the linker. And then with XX, we install muscle dev. So we install the C library. The C library needs to be installed with XX because we want to install a different library for every platform that we're building for. And then we can just, instead of Clang, we can use the XX Clang and, and use it as the compiler. And, and this XX Clang already knows that we're targeting whatever this target platform is. And if you don't want to use XX Clang, then Clang also has this target option that you can, you can use instead that might be cleaner. And if you, for example, like to see projects, of course, use auto tools. The way you auto tools uh, cross compilation is that configure all. Uh, usually takes this uh, dashes host uh, flag that you're supposed to pass in the the value that you're building for, and access Clang allows you to get this value really cleanly. And for CMAC as well, like we have a special flag that uh, that flag does not really exist in the in the in the main Clang binary, but we just added it for for simplicity. So this one will print out all the see make define variables that you will need for this cross compilation context. So another cool thing about cross compilation is that uh, you can target any platform that your compiler supports. So, so any, any platform like this can be built from Docker build directly, even if it's not really an architecture that the Docker supports. Uh, for example, you can uh, build uh, macOS binaries or Windows binaries. Uh, you can build like Windows containers on Linux. Uh, there's um, examples of uh, building uh, WebAssembly and so on. So when you're doing that, usually you want to use the output flag to export out your build results after the build is completed. So for example, you don't want to create a Linux image that contains Darwin binaries. You want the Darwin binaries usually to be in a working directory. And this is what the output allows you to do. So let's look at some cross compilation in action. So in here, I have a simple code project. You can see my code source files and Docker file in here. Let's look at how the Docker file looks like. And um, it's just like a simple two stage Docker file, a build stage based on Alpine, copying in the source code, running the code compiler, and then on other stage, just copying out the binary. And already built this docker file docker build x build and let's say that we want the binary to go into the bin directory and let's say build and it's done and now we have a binary in here and this of course is the linux from 64 binary because i'm on an m1 mac in here but now let's see what it takes to make this docker file so that it can cross compile into any platform and for that, let's first add xx into the Docker file. Let's make sure that the scripts are added to our build stage. And now we also need to make sure that uh, our build stage is always running on the native platform. So it always runs on the best possible speed. So for that one, we add this uh, platform plugin here. 
And now only thing we need to do is tell the compiler uh, what target uh, platform is that we're expecting. And for that, let's first expose the argument in here, target platform. So now this environment variable is available to the next commands. So now we just need to connect the co-compiler with the XX. So one way to do that is to just use XX go in here. But if you don't want to change our command, then another way is to use XX go and dash wrap in here. And this way, all the next go builder invocations will use the right uh, target platform. And now we can run our build again, but this time let's build much more architectures. Let's build two Linuxes and also two Darwin binaries and even a Windows binary. And we're done. And uh, you can see that we only pulled Golang once, we only copied in our source code once, but the compiler ran five times and we got five binaries back as well. So, and the things we got back are in here. See that they are all in the subdirectories by the platform name. And I'm on Darwin ARM64, so I should be able to run this one. And you can see that it works fine and it reports uh, our platform back as well. So this was a simple example how you can modify your existing uh, Docker file so that it can do cross compilation from any platform to any other platform uh, without any performance loss. Uh, check out the repository for XX for more complicated examples. So as a summary, I think it's time to admit that uh, Monopoly of x86 is about to be over and there are other architectures out there as well. But there is no need to panic. The tools are available. You can still build container images. You can still run them. And actually containers provide this nice layer of consistency that you can use when you are moving between one platform to another. And some changes may be required in your project, but as you can see, they're quite easy to make. Uh, as long as you just keep in mind that once your application leaves your PC, it may run in, in another platform as well. So that concludes my talk. Please check out repositories, uh, provide feedback there. If you find any issues, please report them there as well. Uh, if you want to interact with the maintainers more directly, then we have this BuildKit Slack channel in Docker Community Slack. So thank you very much. Enjoy the rest of the conference.